organizing my books today. The plan, okay, we're gonna organize my books. This is like 50% of my books. The other 50% just hangs out in the closet because I don't have space, I don't have a great bookshelf. I really want to see where I can condense things, maybe put some books in my office. I've been thinking about starting like a little blind date with a book business on Etsy, maybe feel into what kind of books I wanna just Sell, resell and put in a nice package for somebody else to enjoy see what books I maybe want to take to donate to the library or those little like cute community libraries you know what I'm talking about these so I just want to pull all of them out count them organize them don't do that you're on camera you're on camera organize them and we're gonna figure out what to do with all of them okay all right i can't tell if this hairdo makes me look like a little girl it kind of does but i'm just gonna go with it i'm gonna pull out all my books and we're gonna start there i feel like i have a lot of books but like my dad has my mom thinks it's like 7,000 books in my house. Like I have a library, not just a library, like seven libraries in my house. And this is how big my library is. That's why I want to start this blind date with a book because my dad has so many books and some of them are first editions, which are really valuable. And some of them are just like good ones that I could send to other people and have them have a great experience and have like a little cute moment. Do not lick my books. So these books are out. I, this is just this bookshelf, which feels like there's a lot of them, but the reason why it doesn't feel like much is because I have no space. If I get rid of some, that means that I can buy new books. Okay, now officially all of the books are out. Here are all the books. What a crazy amount of books this is. The reason why I wanted to organize all these books because I'm feeling kind of uninspired with content, with reading, and I want to see if there are any books that I already have that might inspire a video or inspire me to read them finally. Um, so if you see any books that I pull out and mention that you really want me to read, let me know. I might read them, I might not. And I'm just gonna go through a couple and see why I still have them. There are some that I want to keep for like, even though I've read them because they're collector's items <laughs> and they're beautiful. Obviously, Akatar, obviously, Fourth Wing. I kind of want my bookshelf to be representative of my taste right now. And that's going to be popular fantasy novels. I had an idea, that's why these three books are together. I had an idea of doing like, is the movie slash TV adaptation better than the book? And I have 365 Days, The Queen's Gambit, and Molly's Game here. I don't know. They're all very short books and I feel like I could fly through them and I could just make it my mission to, to do this video. So let me know if you'd like to see that. I'll just kind of put them as babies. Daisy Jones and the Six is like the one Taylor Jenkins read book I haven't read. I started to read it and I just didn't really care. Like I literally got nine pages in. And I just didn't like that it's told kind of in the interview style, but a lot of people like it. So I'm gonna keep it. I might read it. I'm gonna put it with the other Taylor Jenkins read books. These are for sure. We're gonna put for sure on this side. I have so many self-help books I do not want to own because I do not care about 
helping myself. <laughs> it's just not the type of reading I'm doing anymore. Writing as an empath by Judith Orloff being one of them. I'm gonna make a self-help pile and I'm probably going to say goodbye to all of them. Or as The Secret by yourself the fucking lilies. You can see I was like clearly having a time. Empath, the Akashic Records, Rise, Sister, Rise, Choose Wonder Over Worry, The Universe Has Your Back, Many Lives, Many Masters, A Timeless Classic, The True Story of a Prominent Psychiatrist, His Young Patient, and the Past Life Therapy That Changed Both Their Lives. Oh my gosh. You Are a Badass, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, Think and Grow Rich, because I thought reading these books was gonna like bring me money. It hasn't. The Little Book of Common Sense Investing. You think I'm ever gonna read this? How to Win Friends and Influence People. Never read it. The Care and Keeping of You. <laughs> this is like what all we, we read in as like preteens, learning about tampons and periods and stuff. What if I sent this to somebody at once? A blind like, happy reading! In the Flow by Lisa Vitti. I love this book. I'm keeping it because it's so, it's such helpful information. The Immortalist by Chloe Benjamin. Now, I read this a long time ago. So, and I wasn't super into reading at the time, but I really loved it. I felt it, it was such a unique concept and idea. I'm gonna put that with literary fiction so I'm keeping on to. I just love it and I wanna keep it. It has one of my stickers on it. Same with this, Little Fires Everywhere. Loved it, but I don't think I need to keep it. The House Across the Lake and None of This Is True. I wanna kinda keep a thriller section going. We're gonna put that in a thriller section that we're keeping. Flawless, I'm gonna, I wanna pull out books I do wanna read that I own. Flawless is one of them that I got and I still haven't read yet. Happened One Summer, I love this book. I love to reread the scenes, the scenes. So I'm gonna keep it. We're gonna make a romance pile. Well, theoretically, this is another one of my favorite romances. Keeping that in the romance pile. Beach Read. I DNF this book at 200 pages. Everybody loves it, I did not. And go check out my other video of why I didn't like this book. And you know what? Magnolia Parks is in the same boat. I DNF'd Magnolia Parks at like 326 pages. It wasn't my thing. And I made a whole video about why I didn't like these books. It could be a good video to like re retry these books at another time. So maybe that's a video that I should do is like retrying books that I didn't like and DNF'd at first. So we'll put them in their own pile. If not for a video, they would be great as Blind Date with a Book Books. Happy Place by Emily Henry. This was okay. I more so just want to keep it for the cute cover. The Roughest Draft, I loved. So we'll put it with the romances. Addicted to You. This is a really popular series. It was like a three star for me. I It was okay. I didn't love it. Cersei, I never read this. It was popular at the time. I feel like it's one of those that like, if you don't read it when it's popular, it kind of loses its steam for me. I hate that it's jagged edges of the pages. I hate that more than anything. This might be a good blind date with a book. Book. Put that here. The Hotel Nantucket by Ellen Hildebrand. This is a great blind date with a book book. I started it, DNF'd it at 76 pages. Blind date with a book pile. Okay. My camera is about to die. So I'm going to organize the rest of these books. It's gonna be more of the same. And then I'm gonna come back and show you kind of how I've organized them, what I'm thinking. And we'll go from there. Okay, I finally organized it. I took a break 
And now I'm coming back to it. I might finish tomorrow and come back to you because I want to figure out what I'm going to do with all these. But this section is all the stuff I'm probably going to keep. These are like some maybes. This is stuff I'm going to keep and put back in this bookshelf. I got my Dog Breeds book here. I got Jasper here. <laughs> These are books that I think I'm gonna give to other people, donate, all of that fun stuff. And these are just like some random books that I think are my dad, so I might just give them back to him or I will move them over to this pile. This is the giant stack of self-help books, which is unbelievable. But there's a lot here, a lot to work with. But I'm glad I kind of narrowed it down so I can make a lot of space for new, for new books. That's the goal. I, there's like a lot, perhaps too many books, which is why I'm going through all of them. First of all, I think I'm going to put back the ones I know I'm keeping and then I'm going to make separate piles for all the ones that I'm maybe going to donate and give away and put in a blind date with a book business. That's where I'm at right now. This is a bigger to do than I thought it was gonna be, but yes. Here's Jasper once more. Look how handsome he looks. I love you. You look at Jasper. So this is the final shelf. It looks so bare now, but I'm glad because that means I can buy more books and put them on here. I got my fantasies. These are all the books that I still want to read that I have physical copies of. I think it's good to put them top, front, center so that I'm reminded every day I come in here of all the books that I still need to read. I just have like my hard covers, books I've already read. These, this is like romance section. This is more literary fiction slash thriller. These are, some of them are just kind of random. Bottom shelf is like some lawyer books. Yeah, m more my legal stuff in Harry Potter, dog breeds and astrology. If that's not my brand, what is? Wait, hold on. This is like so my brand. Sex and the Constitution, lawyery books, being a feminist, Harry Potter, dog breeds, and astrology. If that's not my brand, what is? I'm mean, gonna still try to figure out what I wanna do with the rest of these books, which is like another at least 100 books I'm looking at that I think I wanna give these away or put some of these in a blind date with a book business on Etsy and send these to a new home and have them be like a fun experience for someone else and make it a whole package. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I'll make an additional video for that. If that's something you want to see, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for being on this organizing journey with me. And I hope you feel so elevated. I'll see you next time. Like, subscribe, do all the things. Love ya. Bye.